Muhammad Ali Shumali to grace us with his uh, lecture on the global message of Islam. And uh, Hajjahan needs no introduction because he is well known across the globe. He's an international figure, alhamdulillah. And he speaks many languages. And uh, as I said, I'm humbled no. to be in his presence. And uh, that said, I will rest, leave the rest of the talking, as I should, to the alims, the ulamai rabbani, those who are humble, as well as very capable. Thank you. So with that said, uh, I would like to warmly welcome our most esteemed guest, Ujjatul Islam, al Muslimin, Dr. Muhammad Ali Shumali, who, by the way, we've also had the pleasure of, on many occasions of him giving lectures and that is another one of our iftakharat hmm. that he has regularly graced us and he has humbled us by accepting our uh, uh, let's say invitations to the to give lectures at the Imam Hussain Foundation in, in North Watford with that said uh, let us warmly welcome Ajarai uh, Dr. Shamali to the program with a loud salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi ladiyya al-azim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. Wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. La siyama baqiyatillahi fi al-aradin. Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu al-sharif. Wa ja'alana min a'wanihi wa ansarih. I am very delighted to be with you in such a great night. The night of Mab'ath, 27th of month of Rajab. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the first time received revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the cave of Hira and also according to some historical reports 27th of Rajab is also a probable uh, time of ascension of the Prophet to heaven, Mi'raj. There are different opinions about when Mi'raj took place, but one opinion is 27th of Rajab. What is universally accepted is that among the Shia scholars is that it's the first time also that the Prophet received revelation. It's a great occasion. Maybe we can say it's the greatest occasion in the history of mankind because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his final book, final message for humanity in this uh, day. So we are very happy, very delighted, and I offer my heartfelt congratulations to Imam of our time, to all believers in Islam, to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, in Dua that we have for this occasion in books of Dua, for example, if you go to Mafatihul Janan for the actions of 27th of month of Rajab, there is a beautiful Dua that Sheikh Abbas Qummi quotes from Sheikh Kafami in his book Al Baladul Amin, and he says that in this night we should read this Dua. The beginning of the dua shows the significance of what happened in this time. Allahumma inni as'aluka bitajallil a'zam fi hadhi al-layla min al-shahr al-mu'adham wal-mursal al-mukram. O Allah, I ask you because of the greatest manifestation that took place in this night, in this great month. At Tajalli al azam greatest manifestation of Allah. 
in the Quran itself we have this concept that Allah makes manifestations although we have a lot in you know Islamic spirituality mysticism but in the Quran itself this idea is very clearly mentioned when Musa ala nabiyana wa alayhi wa alayhi salam ask Allah Rabbi arani anzur ilayk because he was under pressure by people you know to show them God so Musa alayhi salam conveyed the message to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that people would see the result the reply so he said my Lord please Arani, show me, means show me yourself, and like, I look at you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ennaka lan tarani ya Musa. O Musa, you are not going to see me. Lan, ulama say lan is for ta'abid. Means normally it's when something is forever rejected. It's not possible. But look at the mount. When Musa asked this question, he was close to a mount. If this mount remains in its place, remains intact, then you can expect to see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّى وَخَرَّ مُوسَى سَعِقَى When Allah manifested himself to that mount جَعَلَهُ دَكَّى The mount was exploded and Musa fell down. So everyone got the answer. It's beyond your capacity and it is not possible for absolute being to come to your vision. Allah is too great to be seen by our physical eyes. Look at what happens to the mount when Allah makes a manifestation. Not the greatest manifestation, a manifestation to this mount. Quran is the greatest manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore Allah says, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ If we send down the Quran to a mount, you would see that the mount would become khasha'ah. Khasha, in my humble opinion, is much more than dakka. Ja'alahu dakka means was exploded. But if Allah sends Quran to a mount, it becomes very humble, like it becomes dust without any sound of explosion just harsh and mutasaddan it would break into pieces but in a very humble way so in this night greatest tajalli of allah has happened Allahumma inni as'aluka bitajallil a'zam fi hadhihi al-layla min al-shahr al-mu'azzam So the greatest tajalli of Allah happened in this night, in this great month. You may say, what's the difference then between this night and night of Qadr? Because we say, that Allah revealed the Quran in night of Qadr, in the month of Ramadan. What's the difference? The difference is that in Laylatul Qadr, Allah revealed the entire Quran at once to the Prophet. Because Quran has two types of revelation. 
revelation at once and gradual revelation نزول دفعی and نزول تدریجی تدریجی gradual one started in this night and continued for 23 years of course there were three years of revelation not going to the prophet but overall from the first revelation up to the last revelation it took 23 years 13 years in Mecca 10 years in Medina but in Laylatul Qad Allah revealed the entire Quran to the prophet so this night is the night that Quran started coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so we ask Allah because of this greatest tajalli and manifestation and also we ask Allah because of that messenger who is very honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the Prophet to give us our hajat our request and to salli ala muhammad wa alih the first thing is to send your salutations to the prophet and his family and then beautiful hajat and duas are there you can refer to mafatihul uh, janan dua of the night of the 27th of rajab so this night is in a sense the greatest night in the history of mankind because it's the night that Allah made the greatest manifestation the final message of Allah came the last prophet was appointed and actually started receiving revelation I would like also to draw your attention to what we have in dua after Ziyarat Ali Yasin in Ziyarat Ali Yasin which is one of the most beautiful and very highly recommended du'as for connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his wali imam of our time there is a du'a after ziyara the du'a starts with this Allahumma inni as'aluka an tusalli ala muhammadin nabiy rahmatik wa kalimati nurik O oh Allah, I ask you to send your salutation to the Prophet. Who is the Prophet? It's very difficult for us to describe the Prophet. Maybe it's impossible. But Alhamdulillah, we have descriptions of the Prophet, the Quran, in the Hadith that help us. There are two descriptions here which are very beautiful very profound very comprehensive and very much rooted in the quran this prophet who from tonight is raised as a prophet is nabi rahmatik is the one who is a prophet of mercy the Naba that the Nabi brings for this Prophet is the Naba of mercy, <laughs> Rahmah. He has been given a book tonight, which is the book of healing and mercy. And Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as rahma for the people of the world. So, نَبِي رَحْمَتِكْ If you want to summarize everything about this Prophet, you can say he is Nabi or Rahma. Someone who is showing Rahmaniya and Rahimiya of Allah. In the best way that a human being can show we should all try to reflect names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah reflects beautiful names of Allah 
and in particular he reflects Rahmaniyyah and Rahimiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Rahman is only used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rahim is only used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and once for the Prophet. We never call anyone Rahman except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we can be manifestation of Rahman by showing inclusive Rahmah to all creatures of God. And we can be manifestation of Rahim by showing additional extra Rahmah to believers, to people who do good. Rasulullah showed rahmah to everyone. He was rahmatun lil alameen, so his manifestation of rahmaniyyah. And also, bil mu'mineen raufun rahim. His manifestation of rahimiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is nabiyya rahmatik. Wa kalimata nurik. Rasulullah is not someone who has been given light in the form of book only. Someone who is na'udhu billah dark, but Allah has given him a torch, a light, a lantern, which is the Quran. Rasulullah is himself a source of light and has been given the Quran because the Quran cannot be given to someone who lacks light. Ya ayyuhan nabi inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadheeran wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi iznihi wa sirajan munira. This ayah is very much to be reflected in this occasion because this is also the ayah which explains the mission statement of the Prophet. Why Allah sent this Prophet? Like وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Which explains the mission of this Prophet. Also this ayah in Surah Ahzab, these verses from Surah Ahzab explain why the Prophet was sent, why this messenger was sent. And among things Allah says he is Siraj Munir. He is not dark. He is not in darkness. He doesn't lack light. No, he is source of light. He is Siraj Munir. He keeps a spreading light. He is not a siraj which is off or on and off. He is siraj munir, is illuminating lantern. So we say Nabi Rahmatik wa kalimate nurik is the word of light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mercy of Allah, light of Allah are reflected in this person. So a beautiful connection takes place in this night. The message of mercy and healing and light comes to the prophet of mercy and light. And we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to benefit this great blessing and we are being given the honor of adhere to this message and follow this message and we ask him to give us tawfiq, strength, determination to fully absorb this light and reflect this light. I would like to share with you some verses of the Quran that helps us that help us in understanding the universal message. Of course, it's already clear, it's Rahman al Alameen, it's light, anything which is a matter of light, a matter of healing, a matter of mercy, certainly it's for all mankind. But I thought maybe we can also go further into Quranic. Uh, guidance about this issue and as an example I may mention two verses of the Quran and inshallah we will benefit from the light of the Quran one verse is 
verse 157 of Surat A'raf, chapter 7, verse 157. This ayah is one of the verses of the Quran that is very key, very fundamental for those who want to understand Islam, for those who want to do tabligh of Islam. It's very important. It has lots of points. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل Those who follow the messenger, the prophet Rasul is a title which is used for those prophets who were given a message. There were 124,000 Nabi, but not everyone was given a message. Many of them were preaching and teaching message given to another person, a prophet who was Rasul. So every Nabi is not Rasul, but every Rasul is Nabi. 313 Rasul were there. 124,000 prophets. So you can see Rasul is a select of the prophets and of course among those 313 we have five who are most outstanding they are called Ulul Azm Min Ar Rusul they are messengers of great determination so those who follow this messenger the prophet who is Ummi there are different interpretations Ummi in the sense of someone who has not gone to school someone who is not affected by a schooling system of that time by teachers of that time it's not bad to go to school if there is a good school but this man is someone who has remained natural and pure not affected by polytheistic and superstitious teachings of people of that time and also no one can say you know he has learned these things from a school from a college <laughs> no so he is not a person who has gone to school he's unschooled or ummi in the sense that he is from mecca from ummul qura so this was a title that maybe for now for us now it is a matter of different you know interpretations but actually this was a code this was a point of reference that people of the book could easily relate to this was actually a code for them because they were expecting a prophet who would be on me they would find it written down in their scriptures this prophet messenger does these things and these show universal message of Islam. يأمرهم بالمعروف وينهاهم عن المنكر. The prophet asks people to do what is معروف. معروف for us after we have been given sharia becomes more sophisticated but ma'roof in its basic level is whatever through your fitra through your human conscience you understand to be good this is ma'roof for all people of the world there are certain things that they would understand these are good things. And munkar is what people with good will, good heart, with conscience, they would find to be not acceptable. For example, we know that kindness is good. We know honesty is good. We, we know that keeping our promises is good. We know that looking after needy people is good. Respecting parents is good. We know that being kind to elderly people, ill people is good. This is ma'roof, everyone understands. Murder is munkar, lying is munkar, cheating is munkar, adultery is munkar. 
killing and looting and war and violence is munkar. This prophet came to remind them of their things in fitrah. Amir al Mu'minin in Nahj al Balagh talks about the prophets and he says one of the things that the prophets did was they ask people to go back to the covenant that in their fitrah in their innate nature they have made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also those things that they could understand by their own reason but they were buried under superstitious ideas or under their total immersion in dunya they try to unearth those things so this man has come to tell you do ma'roof don't do munkar in mecca we didn't have that many uh, shari rulings most of the tashri'at legislations came in medina in Mecca, more it was a matter of Tawheed and certain moral rules to observe. Certain uh, instructions about respecting lives of people, modesty, etc. يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ This man tells people that those things which are tayyib, those things that by your fitrah you find pleasant, acceptable, is halal for you. Anything that by your fitrah is khabith, is unpleasant, unwanted, refrain from. Everyone should understand that Islamic Sharia is not going to change this. Islamic Sharia is just giving us extra lens to find what is tayyib or khabith, what is ma'roof or munkar. Otherwise, Everything should be remaining the same. It's not that Islamic Sharia makes certain tayyibat khabith or certain khabith tayyib. No, it's just like a person that when he's just looking with fitra and conscience is using naked eye. When you are using Sharia, it means you are putting some lens on your eyes. You're, you're using some microscope. Otherwise, everything is going back to these basic things. Ma'roof and munkar, tayyib and khabith. وَيَذَعُ عَنْهُمْ إِسْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ This man has come to liberate people. Rasulullah has come to free people from the chains that over time have been put on human beings. They are chained up with superstitious ideas ignorance tyrant people they have tried to keep people ignorant so that they can rule them or their own shahawat have buried their aql their intellect rasulullah wants to free them and remove these heavy burden and chains فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ Please, brothers and sisters, listen very carefully here. Those who believe in this prophet and support him and help him and follow the light which is sent down with him not just to him it doesn't say unzila ilay it says unzila ma'a this confirms what i said at the beginning that rasulullah is siraj munir and has been given quran which is the book of light Nur Mubin. Siraj Munir is given Nur Mubin. Quran Unzila Ma'ahu. Not only Unzila Ilayhi. 
there is a ma'iyya, there is a friendship, there is a company between the Quran and Rasulullah. Because every messenger must match with the message which has been given to him, with the book which has been given to him. You cannot give Quran to another messenger. You cannot give Angel to another. Angel must be given to Jesus. Torah must be given to Moses. Quran must be given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There is a match here. When we say, "Kana khulqohu al-Quran," when the wife of the Prophet was asked, and you know, she put it nicely, that "Kana khulqohu al-Quran," for us this is a principle that the messenger, the Rasul, the Mursal. And the Risala which is given, the mission which is given to him, the message which is given to him, they should match. Unzila ma'ah. So, those who believe in him and support him and help him and follow the light which has been sent down with him, Ula'ika humul mufleheun. These are the people who would have falah, who would have success. Who would have felicity? Who would have happiness? So you see, this messenger is a man who has come to liberate us, to remind us of our own moral conscience, to tell us to do what is ma'roof, not to do what is munkar, to eat, to do what is tayyib, not to eat, not to drink, not to do what is khabith. The next ayah that I would like to share with you as an example of this message of fitra and universality is this beautiful ayah a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim inna allaha ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha an al-fahsha'i wal munkar wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun this ayah is one of the examples is not the only example but it's one of the examples of universal teachings of the Quran something that talks to human fitra to human conscience something that can engage every person actually if you read some of the uh, tafsir books you find that there were people that because of this ayah they became Muslim this is ayah 90 of Surah Nahl chapter 16 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he commands us to do three things. These are three major things. First, adl. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adl. Adl is so fundamental that many Muslim scholars say adl is without any exception good. Even they go further and they say all the virtues go back to Adl. For us Adl is not just justice. Adl is justice along with righteousness. Because normally people think justice is social. So we say justice and righteousness together because Adl for us starts within and then extends outside. I can be living alone and be unjust. So even if you are alone, there is a sense of being just or unjust. You can be in a cave and unjust or just. So for us, Adl is very comprehensive. It's a starting within, going without. And therefore, many scholars have said, many ethicists have said that this is the most fundamental uh, virtue which has no exception. In any case, we have to build our moral life, personal, social, on justice. And when we say justice, it's not justice with respect to friends. It's not justice with respect to relatives. It's not even justice with respect to fellow belie believers. Quran says justice is universal. 
لا يجرمنكم شنعان قوم على ألا تعدلوا Do not let hostility with any group of people make you unjust. اعدلوا You must be just Even with the worst enemies Even if they are enemies of God You cannot be unjust You have to be just اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى This is closer to taqwa. Injustice is satanic. How can with something like injustice you think you can fight enemies of God? If with injustice I want to fight enemies of God, it's like giving a weapon to the enemies of God. Unfortunately, sometimes believers from different traditions, they think that they can compromise about justice when it comes to people that they have faith problems with them, etc. No, there is no exception. If you are serving God, there is no way to compromise about justice. Friend or enemy, far or close, you must treat them with justice. This is Quran. But Quran says, this is just the first level Allah is not happy with us just to be just. First we make a firm ground of justice. No zulm should be able to penetrate. Everyone must be 100% sure that their rights are observed. Even the most powerful people even if there is Khalifa to Rasulullah, if this Imam of Mu'mineen, if there is a leader, if there is any person, cannot disregard even a piece of justice. One of the conditions of governance, leadership, is justice. And if someone doesn't have justice, automatically is dismissed. There is no need even to dismiss him. He's automatically dismissed. There is a formality, maybe a council has to take place, for example, to dismiss him officially. But from Allah's perspective, if someone is unjust, he is dismissed. But when we have this firm ground of justice, then we can build human relations based on ihsan. Allah wants us to be kind to each other. Allah wants us to share with each other, not just to observe rights of each other. I have to give from my rights to other people. Even sometimes I don't have enough to share. I have to prefer others. That's ithar. Yu'thiruna ala anfusim. This is message of rahmah. Message of rahmah starts with adl. Goes on with Ihsan, reaches Mawasat, Ithar. You are happy to give what you need yourself to others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly says in the Quran, This is what humanity needs today and in every age. Allah says it's impossible. Lantanalu. It's impossible to reach goodness and piety without giving what you love to others. Not taking what you love from others and doing zulm to them. No, what they love and belongs to them is for them. What belongs to you and you love, you have to share. If we just observe this, our problems will be solved. The problem today in the world is not because we don't have enough of resources, we don't have enough space, we don't have enough water. No, the problem is that there is no fair distribution of opportunities and resources. So much of wastage, so much of taking advantage 
there is mismanagement, there is no efficiency, and on the other hand, there is zulm. When there is jahl and zulm together, what do you expect? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَأَبَيْنَ أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَهَا وَأَشْفَقْنَ مِنْهَا وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا This amana, this trust of Allah, no creature was able to take. They honestly said, we cannot take it. Mountains, skies, earth, they said, we cannot take this amana. We cannot undertake this amana. We are too little. Man Hamalaha. He said, I can do it. And of course they can do it. But in practice what happened in Nahukana Valuman Jahula was very unjust and very ignorant. For the most part. Of course there are exceptions. But for the most part, we see it's Jahl and Zulm. Jahl by acting unwisely. Zulm by acting unjustly. This is the problem today. So much of unwise decisions, unwise, uh, unwise consumption, and also zulm. People are dealing with rights of people without care, without any concern, unfortunately. So this message that Allah in this night through his prophet of mercy and light gifted to humanity is a message that invites everyone to start with justice but then go further and be muhsan, be benefactor, be kind and in particular don't forget your families don't you forget your kinship because we need a strong families at the service of humanity. Individuals cannot serve humanity if they don't belong, if they don't grow up in families. Future of humanity very much depends on respecting and preservation of institution of family. There are many challenges, unfortunately, today to family life. Islam is religion of family. We may have, of course, individuals, we may have single people, but that is not the ideal. The ideal is that we belong, we support, we preserve family life, and indeed we want to make our community an extended family. When I go to my community, when I think of my community, I think of my family. And then the whole humanity becomes my family. As the Quran wants to put us in our mind that you are all children of Adam and Eve. Family concept of family is so important that Allah says that even if you are six billions of people or seven billions of people you still must think of yourself as members of the same family and unfortunately sometimes we live with four or five people and we are individualistic a true follower of Islam looks at all people as his family and feels responsible for them but if we are affected by the culture of individualism and liberalism, we don't feel responsible even for our close relatives. So Allah says, وَإِيْتَا إِذِ الْقُرْبَى You must have a special, not exclusive, but additional concern for your families and relatives. وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَاقِ and Allah would prohibit you to do things which are ugly, immoral, things that every person finds not acceptable. We Muslims cannot cheat, cannot be dishonest. 
our standards are higher than standards of other people not that we have different standards we have human standards and on top of that we have our religious standards we have to be good human beings and good citizens and good Muslims not forgetting being good human being or good citizen and be just a good Muslim there, there is no such Islam Islam that the Prophet has taught us is Islam that develops your humanity and makes you a good member of family and society and then you can expect to be a true servant of Allah Iman is a fruit of the tree which has its roots in fitra, in urf, in aql, in moral conscience and of course in also revelation. There is no only one root for Iman. I think we can all reflect on these verses more but my time unfortunately is finished. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to refresh our understanding of Islam and the Quran to be able to free ourselves from anything that might unknowingly have been borrowed from other sources anything which is not pure anything which is not original Islam let us leave them let us keep them away from us and go back to this pure message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the message of light which is the message of Rahmah message of justice message of kindness message of family message of human family as a whole let us bring only light to ourselves and to our family and community let us bring hope let us be source of healing for each other May inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless humanity in this time with inshallah quick solution for this pandemic but also for all other problems that we have which might be hidden maybe they are not noticed as this pandemic may Allah fix all our problems the haqq Muhammad wa ala Muhammad thank you very much fi amanillah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Dear Hajjah, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum wa Assalamu wa Thank you. Thank you for that very informative and uh, quite uh, profound uh, description of uh, the global message of Islam. I have a question for you. Yes. And the question is this: that we're living in a time which is very strange. No doubt many people are getting confused and many people are getting depressed because of all the uh, let's say unfortunate news uh, that surrounds us every single day and the fact that you've described the world as a global village if I may put it like that and that we're all brothers in humanity uh, the question of leadership, you mentioned, for example, that Allah does not compromise. And then when justice goes out of the window, then automatically uh, that leader in the eyes of the Almighty becomes 